Hey guys, you ever wonder how an airplane gets from here to there? No, of course you don't. You just point the nose up and you turn the afterburners on and off you go. That's exactly how it works. Ish. I'm going to simplify this a little bit. Uh, in our little tiny airplanes that we fly around, it's kind of like that. You announce your departure and you just go, no questions asked. In the bigger, faster jets, uh, they've got these pesky rules and instructions that you have to follow. Today I'm going to fly a SID and I'm going to fly a STAR. SIDs are instrument departures and STARS are arrival routes. Think about these as uh, on and off ramps to the highway in the sky. I don't have a ton of experience with SIDs and STARS just because it doesn't come up all that often, but I have a friend named Russ who for years his job was designing instrument procedures and now he actually flies around and tests them for accuracy. So if you want to learn something, try to find an expert. Let's hop in the plane with Russ and today we're going to fly my slow little plane like it's a big fast plane. SIDs and STARS, um, the, the whole idea with the SIDs and STARS is solely to ease air traffic clearances. You fly the SID versus me telling you, this fix, this, fly this, fly this, fly this. Yeah, this course, all this kind of stuff, right? So that's, that's all it is. It's like a, a, a canned flight plan kind of, okay? So, so you, you take off on a SID, then you have some kind of routing to get to where you're going. Mm -hmm. And then you have a star to get in there. And then you have your approach at the end of the star. Every flight begins with a plan, and today's flight required a bit of pre-flight education. Before we got into the plane, we snagged a conference room at a local FBO, and Russ gave me an overview of some of the basics with respect to these procedures, and specifically how we would be doing the approach and departure in today's flight. Realistically, if I was gonna fly out of here and go that direction, they might have me in, or they wouldn't have me go down here. That's right, so, okay, so you get a lot of these SIDs that the first fix is not really in the direction you wanna go. Okay. Okay, like there's the Texoma, Departure coming out of here. This whole area goes to it goes to DFW. Like, right, yeah, one of the the VOR right there, Ranger, DFW, right? and then goes out. So what Russ and I are talking about here is something that used to confuse me quite a bit. If you look at a departure like the Swabber One, which we're flying today, on its own it makes complete sense. Based on where you're headed, there's built-in waypoints for you to follow. Nothing confusing about it. However, multiple airports share the same departure and the same arrival. Today we're flying out of Decatur, so suddenly it doesn't make sense that we would fly 30 miles south to intercept the first fix on this departure. Both your GPS and ForeFlight are going to do this and it's not going to make sense. The system takes you from your current location to the beginning of the departure. It's very unlikely to happen or all pilots would file no SIDS on their flight plan. ATC knows this as well. When you get your clearance, they're going to give you a departure, but once airborne, they're going to direct you to a waypoint that makes more sense. For example, they might tell us to fly direct Muti so we can intercept the Swabber 1 departure. They don't want you flying southeast to DFW Airport, getting mixed up in their airspace just so you can turn around and fly back out to the northwest. So we are here today with Russ, and we are. I'm going to fly my first simulated departure. We're going to fly. We're going to fly a departure. Yeah, we are. Okay. So Russ is the guy who invented uh, instrument approaches. Used, used to essentially, yes. Yeah. Before that, it was just willy nilly. Everyone was having a good time. <laughs> yeah, you, me and uh, Captain Jefferson. Yeah. 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 Uh, but you know, you used to, you used to design instrument approaches, right? It's true. Yeah, I did that for about ten years. Transit two zero Papa, you are cleared to Amarillo via the Swabber one departure Houdad transition. Maintain three thousand. Expect eight thousand five hundred will do. Right here because we're VFR. Oh, okay, makes sense. Uh, yeah. Uh, in one zero minutes, enter controlled airspace on heading one nine or zero. Walk and departure frequency. I'll give you that too. All right. That's it. So I'm clear to Amarillo via the Swabber One arrival. Who transition? Three thousand feet. Expect eighty thousand five hundred in ten minutes. Uh, enter controlled airspace on a heading of one nine or zero, and squawk one two zero zero. Read back correct. Disappearing runway. All right, full power. Heels are on the floor. Better line. Feet, so I'm going to go to 190. Correct. Super traffic in the late 190. Thank you. Area to the, uh, 
Once you get to uh, 1700, which you are, you can press unsuspend here and it will sequence to your next thing. Direct to 163 now. No, don't do it, no, don't do it, because you're still complying with ATC instructions, right? Oh, oh okay. Okay. So you're entering control airspace on this heading of uh, 190. Yeah. And you would contact ATC and say you're passing through, you know, whatever, 2400 on the uh, swabber departure, heading 190 assigned, and they say, Roger. Right. Four, two zero Papa. Uh, Looks fly like direct right piglet. Fly direct piglet. So now I'm going to go in here by procedure uh -huh. on the fines. Uh -huh. no, no, yeah. I'm going to go to piglet. Final one, five, piglet. And then I'm going to go direct. Correct. Activate. And then I'm going to continue and climb. Now remember, we're only up to three until they give us higher, but they would now give you higher. And you can climb and maintain 8,000. Okay. So the only thing really different is they're communicating with me to get me off the ground into this part of the system. And now it's, it's there's no there's no difference. There's if, if they don't have anything else to to do with you, yeah. you will fly, well, I'll fly with, the, yeah. Pigil, Mute, Mute, Hudad, uh, you know, whatever, on like that, right? Whatever, whatever's in your flight plan. It is so much simpler. Now that I'm actually learning it, seeing it, and applying it, like, like in my head this morning, I was like, okay, Russ is going to be like, Ryan's an idiot. You can't learn this stuff. It's too hard. I'm like, it's very basic. I go into everything new like that. Like, I don't think I can do it. And it's like, this is nothing. It's it's true. I mean, we spent, what, 30, 45 minutes maybe on the ground? Ish, something like yeah. that. Yeah, someone in that range. And, and that's really all it takes is to kind of, kind of clear up everything. There's nothing really that's... Too amazingly complicated on a sitter star, except for just knowing what to, where to look for what information, right? I mean, as sure. you saw, there's there's a ton of stuff on each chart, but most of it doesn't apply yeah. to your particular flight. As we were wrapping up the departure portion of the flight, it was time for me to ask the most important question ever. All right, so now we are direct beauty, beauty. I don't know who do you name these things when you were doing these? Uh, to some degree, yeah. How do you? Yeah, it's got to be five characters to two so, syllables. Is that the rule? Five characters, yeah, but uh, as unpronounceable as possible. Uh, no, that's not the rule. Actually, as pronounceable as possible is actually one of the, the guidelines. But that's just hard because, you know, there's only so many combinations of five characters. Is there not just right? a piece of software that just gives you every five-character combination um, and you just start taking them off? Actually, it was it was built into the software, yeah, the design software for for the uh, procedures. Okay. Yeah, you could, you know, select, hey, I need a new fix, and it'll recommend you a new fix, or okay. you can select another one, or, you know, whatever. Uh, you don't like that one, or you wanted to start with a different letter, yeah, you can do that. Now, the ones in Dallas have gone Star Wars themed. There is there are a lot of themes, and, you know, it's funny, because the, the centers, you know, like, uh, Fort Worth Center, it says, they, they reserve fix names. Oh, really? That... I, I, I'm convinced there's like some guy in each center who like is hunting for fixed names that you could pronounce a certain way, you know, to make a theme, right? Yeah. And so, so they reserve them. No kidding. And then, uh, and there's even trading that goes on between centers. Oh, really? Yeah. Of fixed names, just like it's I'll swap like, you a Simpsons like a character yeah. for your Star Wars character. Yeah, it's like fantasy football or something. It's crazy. Uh, but most, but most, that's only for kind of special things like. Uh, Primarily on stars, some SIDs, but primarily stars seem to get these a lot, these fixed name themes. But on approaches, it's generally just whatever comes up next, as long as it looks reasonable. Okay. Yeah. I'm comfortable with everything you showed me. All right, so good. Star. I, that was SID. We're done. Okay. We can fly it up forever. Okay, star. All right. I'll tell you what, let's do this. I'll give you your clearance. I'll fly while you put it in, okay? Sound All right. Good? Sounds okay. good. All right, I have the controls. You although, have. although clearly with your airplane, <laughs> you don't even have to touch I'm not anything. Doing anything. <laughs> this is so well trimmed. It is, Brian. It is amazing. All right. Extremely. You think we have an autopilot? Okay, so your clearance here is going to be Amarillo, or whatever. Okay. Uh, to uh, oops. Well, let's see. Back to Decatur, I guess we'll do for this scenario. Okay. And then uh, via the hunker transition, uh, we set to hunker transition. I worded that backwards. We set to hunker transition. Okay. Oh, yeah, so you're nice on a, Yeah, so I'm going on code indicator, we set to hunker transition. Yeah. Yeah, I've already got my squat code. And, yeah, 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 okay. Well, we got it already. Right 
right, so I'm going to go ahead and load in here. Okay, and that's good enough. Yep. I'm going to go to procedure. I want to go to arrival. Uh -huh. And you had said hunker. We set two. set two. Hunker transition. There you go. Transition. Load arrival. Load arrival. So obviously this is a, you know, a, what would you call it, a problem with, I mean, it's a, a fallacy of the training environment here, right? We're in the air. And in a void we're, not, we're not even close to where we are, right? No. So, but that's fine. Um, now this, this arrival, as we talked about, has altitude restrictions on it, right? Like flight level 240 and 230 and this kind of stuff, right? Uh, climb up to 240, okay? Okay. And uh, we can probably hit 250 knots. <laughs> Scream it down and dive, right? Oh, you obviously can't make them, so you tell ADC, okay, I, I, you know, I can't make the altitudes. Right. Which they know, yeah. because we're in a command seat. For now, let's go direct to words. All right. So I'm going to go in here. I'm Just for, for button practice. I'm going to go to words. I'm going to go direct. Activate. And then I should get... I'm going to load the route. I did want to point out that the star, SIDS and STARS, I mean, they could be hundreds of miles long. Oh, clearly. Yeah, in this case, I mean, this one fix turkey that's on the way western end is 80 miles from the next fix. Yeah. You know, and then that's 38 miles the next one and on like that. So, yeah, they're they're easily a couple hundred miles long. But we really don't want to go all the way out to words. It's another uh, 25 miles. Yeah. So, we might ask for something more you know, direct on our route, which we how about that Greek? You can uh, turn right, direct Greek. And turn right, direct Greek. And resume the arrival. Right, direct Greek, resume the arrival. Okay, so the next fix after Greek is Monza, Monza right? Monza, yeah. And Monza has a expect altitude listed, right? Expect 7,000 or 6,000. Or, 6, or you know, props, expect 6 or 7, right? Yeah. Okay. So you would hear something like this. Uh, Command C20, Papa, cross Monza at 6,000. Okay, so it can use your probably cross Monson 6,000, so I'm going to go ahead and start descending. Well, however you get there is up to you, all right? So how many, you know, if we want to start down now. We're 15 we miles out. Wait, well, 15 miles from where? Oh, we're 15 miles from Greek. How far is Greek from Monza? Uh, it is 10 miles. All right, so we're 26 miles out. Okay. And we got to lose 2,000 feet, right? Yeah, I can okay. do it between, so probably after Greek. Okay. At this point, we're down to 7,500. Because we're, we are eastbound VFR, right? So Correct. it wouldn't be really be a 7500 on the star here. No. Uh, we're 7500, so uh, we'll play along. Now, since this props expect 6 or 7, we're going to say 65, okay, I think for 65, VFR purposes. I think. Yeah. But we'll, and then we'll, we'll actually keep descending after that. Okay? Well, I was going to so, say we go down to so, 55. So then. here's going to be your clearance, right? Okay. So I want you to cross Monza at 6500, continue your descent to. Uh, 35. Okay. Okay, how's that sound? That sounds good to me. So yes. I was going to cross Monson at 6,500, continue down to 3,500. Right. Yeah, we're, I mean, we, we do have to kind of game game the uh, game the star a little bit here because we're VFR. Yeah, we can't but, fly uh, IFR altitudes. Yeah. But this has gone pretty well. Yeah. All right, what's it? So after Monson, we got a right turn to, to uh, WeSat, right? Yep. And we sat's where we're going to get vectors for whatever approach we're going to fly. All right, so we're going to start our turn. We're going to continue to send down to. I know we are crossing. We sat at 6,500. Right. On uh, down to 3,500. And officially, there's Matsa 6,500 looking good. Okay. I could not be happier <laughs> to be doing this. Like for real. Oh, good. Glad it worked out. I've been flying for 13 years. This is the first time I've flown in a rattle. Nice. I'll be putting that in my logbook. Yeah. I will tell the story because I haven't told it on camera. Uh, the very first time I flew IFR, I got a pop-up clearance, and I was brand new. The, the ink on the certificate was still wet, and I was nervous to call up. I literally pulled up my phone and Google how to request a pop-up clearance. <laughs> And then I requested it, and then I put it in my, my GPS, and I was good to go. I put in my approach into Denton, and I was all happy. I had my approach ready to activate, and then it gave me an arrival. So just, I'd like to cancel that part this time. <laughs> and it, well, it, well it, now you don't have to. I know. It, it, had got, it had gone VFR, so I was, I was fine to cancel, but I really wanted to fly an approach, right. even if it was VFR. But I was like, I, I, I don't know what to do with this arrival. <laughs> all right, so we passed reset, so we're on that manual, it's called manual sequence in here. So this, this is, is where they're going to give me vectors. Just, yeah, you're just on the track of 130, right? Yep. All right. And then at some point, if they don't say anything, you you might need to ask, you know, but but they'll say, uh, Command C20, Papa, turn left heading 110, vectors for Arrow Valley. All right, 110, vectors for Arrow Valley.
So there's real world examples of flying a departure and an arrival. There's some more complexities, but essentially it's a visual set of instructions telling you at this specific location, you need to be at this altitude, this heading, and this airspeed. Don't overthink it. As it turns out, it's not overly complicated. I don't like to brag, but I'm really good at floating down the runway. <laughs> I'm just glad we uh, survived. Hey, we're, we're still. <laughs> yes, we. We're not done yet. Air conditioner on. Yeah, thank you. If you weren't in the plane, I would have put it down on the numbers. I'm sure of that. So, uh, yeah, me and Russ are just heading back to his car. We're gonna grab some lunch here. This uh, is how it goes with Brian. <laughs> Yeah, but, uh, yeah, so I'm just gonna drive him back to his car, but I don't want him in the car. Hey guys, thanks for watching. This is actually a, an older video. My plane is not um, very much of an airplane right now. Uh, there's a lot going on. Maybe I'll explain it one day. Uh, maybe it'll fly again one day. Um, okay, SIDS and STARS. Uh, they're a little more complex than what I just showed here, but I'm not your instructor. I'm not an instructor. Uh, the point wasn't to teach you everything there is to know about departures and arrivals, um, but just kind of show a little bit about what this journey is. The SIDS and STARS are like anything else in aviation. Uh, when you first look at it, you can't see the forest for the trees. A simple example, when you very first started flying and you opened a sectional, it's like, oh my gosh, there's so much data here and so many different types of data. You know, it's just, it's, 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 it's overwhelming. Uh, now when you open a sectional, hopefully you just see the one thing that you're looking for and everything else kind of disappears. SIDS and STARS are the same way. You open it up and there's all these lines and waypoints. The only line that matters is the one that you're flying on. So, um, I don't know, it was very helpful. Uh, for me, I'm a tactile learner. I learn by touching things, by doing things, um, to get with Russ and have him explain it to me you know, on the iPad together and then get in the plane and actually fly them. Uh, now it seems really simple to me and it's kind of funny to me that I was even, you know, overwhelmed. Um, and I know everyone doesn't have access to Russ, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to put his phone number on the bottom of the screen here. And it makes me feel good to know that I probably just gave him a little bit of a heart attack. Russ, sorry about that. I'm not going to give people your phone number. But, uh, so anyway, if you wanted to know what these things are and how planes get from here to there, that's basically how it's done. I did one misnomer there. Um, really, arrivals are the things that I don't have a lot of exposure to. Anytime you depart out of a towered field uh, in the DFW Bravo area, you're going to fly portions of a departure. So the departures really aren't that foreign. It's, it's the arrivals. But either way, hopefully this gave you a glimpse into how that works. And if you have any questions, maybe this is a seed uh, that I can plant for you that you can go water and go study and go find an expert to, to help you with it. So uh, thank you guys for watching. You guys fly smart, and I'll catch you in the next one. Click this link to see the most recent video upload. Click this link to see a video that YouTube thinks you might like. Click this link to subscribe to my channel.